After spending the past couple of weeks flip-flopping between weapons, trying to maximize weapon level grinds, we finally were able to check off another weapon off the list. Thanks for stopping by for another Road to Gold featuring the Einhorn Revolving Shotgun. Welcome everyone, I am Deathtrap. I hope the new year has been treating you great so far, and here's to becoming a better version of ourselves in 2022. We are continuing the Road to Atomic grind and have just completed the first shotgun on our list. Starting off with the level grind, know from the start that the Einhorn Revolving is a semi-automatic shotgun. Let's just say I was unaware of this for the first game or two that I used it. If you're expecting on getting one-shot kills in core, you're gonna have a bad time. I think I may have even gotten a hit marker on an enemy that was damn near touching the barrel. Instead, expect a two to three shot kill depending on range. Now the problem isn't really killing any one enemy though. It's the enemy after your first kill that you're worried about as the base magazine only holds five shots. And I know what you're thinking. That's okay, I'll just hide and reload for a second. Well, here's the thing. That's no short task as the reload is an absurd 8.9 seconds to refill all five shots. Because of these two liabilities, I at least recommend you use Hardcore for a very long while while using this weapon, especially starting out. I personally used it in Hardcore the entire time, but I know that there are some that just absolutely detest the mode for whatever reason. Whatever playlist type you choose, stick to using it only on Shipment or DOS House. Trying it on a bigger map is just making things less fun and harder on yourself. Some notable attachments to keep an eye out for are the incendiary rounds, which make even a one pellet with burn off a kill in hardcore. Other notables to be on the lookout for are unfortunately unlocked quite a bit later, but are the Clauser 710mm O2B barrel, 16 gauge 7 round cylinder mags, the buck and slug ammo type, and sleight of hand proficiency. These will help improve the damage range, magazine size, and reload speed when using this weapon. Getting into the camo challenges, as long as you stick to the maps I mentioned in hardcore, a few camo categories should complete quite naturally. Those being the 300 eliminations for pack tactics, 50 multi kills for predatory ambition, 100 close range kills for berserker, and the 100 one shot kills for wildcat. You'll also most likely get the 50 long range kills for deadeye, as the long shot range for shotguns is well within the dimensions of shipment, and in a good number of areas on Das House as well, especially looking down those long hallways. I also believe I unlocked the 50 headshots for surgical well before getting into the later levels, but it definitely took longer than the other weapons that I have got gold camo on. Check your progress every once in a while, and if you seem to be progressing at a lower rate than you'd like, just aim a little bit higher and they will start flowing in. The challenge that will take the longest to complete is most likely going to be Reptilian for getting 5 kills without dying 30 times. You should absolutely start chipping away at this challenge right away when it unlocks at level 20, as it was actually the last challenge I finished because everything else just completed with relative ease. The Bloodthirsties, however, took a lot longer as it can be rough sometimes to streak kills with subpar attachments. Once again, my experience comes from playing hardcore on two maps, so your overall experience could be vastly different if you decide to go a different route. Pictured here is the build that helped me immensely, but keep in mind, that is one where I have unlocked all attachments that you may not have access to if you're underleveled. My main goal with the build was to balance range and accuracy with aim down sight and sprint to fire speed to be in the best position to get a good shot off first. I included extended megs and sleight of hand just to aid myself in case I missed a few shots and miraculously lived to continue a streak. With this loadout, I ran intel and spy plane at kill streaks and forward intel as a perk to have a general idea of where enemies were at at a particular time. You can also always use overkill at perk 3 to bring in another primary you are comfortable with and get 4 kills before switching back to the shoddy to get your 5th if you feel it works better for you. Getting into the challenges that require specific attachments, once again these are much better to complete in hardcore, especially if you are still planning on progressing your bloodthirsties at the same time. The first one unlocked at level 60 is survivalist and tasks you with getting 50 kills without taking damage from that enemy with the sawed off barrel, 16 gauge 7 round cylinder, and the Reisdorf stock equip. I included the build I used if you'd like to take the same route, but honestly you have a bit of leeway here with the remaining attachments. As every kill in hardcore will be a one shot kill barring the extreme ranges, this is essentially just get 50 kills with the specified attachments and will be completed very easily. The only issue I can foresee is maybe if you have incendiary rounds on and get a burn off kill after you've taken damage, in that case it will be slightly more than just 50, but it shouldn't be too bad. Next on the list is Mind Games at level 65, which has you get 100 ADS kills with the Clauser 710mm barrel, 12 gauge 5 round cylinder, and the wrecked proficiency. Now I accidentally switched to this class by mistake in a core game of shipment, and it actually killed enemies quite decently. I still wouldn't recommend the mode if you have Bloodthirsties as a finish, considering you are without sleight of hand here, but if it's just kills you need, core might be able to provide you with a small change of pace, as let's face it, 
hardcore on shipment and DOS house can be a little toxic sometimes. The only other difference in this build compared to the one from the previous one was throwing back on the VDD Hunter stock, which improves ADS walking speed and other handling stats. Just make sure to keep aimed in and you'll have no problem in quickly completing this challenge. And finally at level 70 for Death Artist, we end with the most painful of the attachment challenges, which has you get 100 hipfire kills while moving with the birdshot 5 round cylinder, VDD hunter stock, and the gung ho proficiency. Unfortunately, survivability comes at a premium with this challenge, so I wouldn't focus my attention on any other remaining ones while completing it. There are a couple of ways to get the necessary kills, but neither option is great. One is to just walk around and shoot enemies from the hip as you see them using standard loadout perks you normally would use. And the other is to throw on serpentine at perk 1, double time at perk 3, and quick as your weapon kit perk, and then run around like a madman, hip firing anything and everything you see. The second option can be a little fun due to the absurdity, but it will lose its charm quite fast if you're dying more than killing. Take a break here and there if you need to keep yourself sane, otherwise just grind it out and let out tears of relief when it's done. Finishing all challenges will of course net you a golden revolving shotgun and a notch toward diamond camo and atama camo if you choose to go for them. Whether you are planning on getting it gold or have already done so, let me know of your experiences with the weapon and its camo challenges in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. Thanks again for stopping by. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you on the next one. Peace.